So, I was wondering, what happens when you realize that you are the problem? You want to sit and talk about what that looks like? You want to sit and talk about the realness of that? What happens? My oldest son say all the time, you don't want to take your beat. He don't necessarily say it to me, but I do hear it while we're in person or when it's, you know, when it's the, when it's the playback for certain conversations. And he's right about us as a collective willing to take our beat. From the moment I've ever heard him say that, that has been one of my guideposts. One of my saving graces. Because no, not all the time. I'm getting better. I'm getting much better. But what happens when you are the problem? What happens when you discover you are the problem? How does that work? And I know the way that it's going around these days is it's called accountability. But I actually call it affirmation because it keeps us out of the zone of thinking that we actually are perfect in certain scenarios. What happens when you discover that you are the problem? And it's not a bad thing being the problem because once you show up as the problem, then in 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 um, proper contract or in proper reconciliation, the solution. Once the acknowledgement happens of the problem, then close up behind will um, be the acknowledgement of the solution. I wonder if some things um, are being slow to reconcile because of the slowness or the arrested development around being able to acknowledge when oneself is the problem. And I say all of that to say that it was it's on my is on my mind Dealing with folks who are actually in the midst of, you know what? I was the problem in that situation. And saying and acknowledging that doesn't necessarily mean that they are now required to go mend whatever is broken. That's not what I mean when I, you know, to speak about this. And me and my daughter was just talking about this not too long ago. I'm not the type of person that requires apologies. I'm not the type to say, I'm not going to talk to you until you apologize. I've never required such things. But I have required for the proper understanding or the proper comprehension around it. Because I am known for saying this. Just because I'm upset with you doesn't make you wrong and make me right. That's another thing that keeps or helps to keep me balanced. Just because I am upset with you, disappointed with you. Oh, interesting. Just because I am upset with you does not make you wrong and make me right. Me figuring that I'm right could probably be the problem in, in, in many instances. If I'm figuring like I didn't contribute no wrong to it, th then I'm probably in some type of faulty measure. And I only say that because I know me. And sometimes my rambunctiousness can get me into some situations. So if I don't really require apologies for things to move on, and I'm not saying this because I am requiring somebody to shift their mode or, um, 
or requiring folks to do it like me. No, no. I'm just asking these questions because some things are being put on the table. We're now having these intimate roundtables and it's just good to speak about it. Because when you speak about it, it loosens up the reins from all of this inflexible, all these inflexible expectations. And I also think because of my rambunctiousness that folks figure I'm way more inflexible than I actually am. That's mainly because I be in champion mode for the underdog. So most of the time that I, most of the stuff that I be fussing about don't have much enough to do with me per se. It does, but it doesn't. So it isn't like an, a, a direct. Now, I will say, though, there are some instances with my friends and family where it be the ultimate example just to come and speak about. Because I am still, you know, having this earthly experience. But I am having an experience that a lot of people don't understand. And then when I ask them, do you know what I came here for? Everybody fumbling over their words. But we all came here to have a different kind of earthly experience. And mass production, mass propaganda will have you believe that everybody's cut from the same cloth. Everybody has the same destiny lines and silver linings. No, remember, somebody's trash is somebody else's treasure. Somebody else's pain is somebody else's pleasure. Somebody else's triumph is somebody else's turmoil. We are in a seesaw. We are in a seesaw. The, some of the things that will make someone feel happy and independent will have another one walk away from it. It's the diversity in the spectrum. And each and every human being can have a little bit of both cards that I'm holding up. Either you are financially independent, you're doing your own thing, you're a shot caller, everybody loves to know your name. Or you are vagabond, you are on the outer limits, you are off the beaten paths, you are going down rabbit holes, you are having hermit modes. Both of these experiences not only are realistic, but in some instances are required. That's what keeps the balance. Some folks will be up while others are down. What pisses me off is when those are up, want to scrutinize those are down. As if tables don't turn, you better be careful with that. As if tables don't turn. As if unpredictability can't come visit every last single human on this planet. Every last earthling, mind you. Every single last earthling. If you figure it won't happen to you, and it may not. I suppose that we dial back on the arrogance that feel like because it's not happening to you. That you can like talk really bad or make funny. Now, I say this too. Laughing at one's own pain, something different. Versus laughing at someone else's pain. Now, to laugh with them is something different. Versus laugh at them. If you are directing attention to laugh at somebody else's shortcoming... Do what you feel, okay? I'm not, I know because it, it felt like I was about to become like, get in my big mama mode. Do it exactly the way you want to. Do it till you're satisfied. Just understand that when the consequences begin to unfold, the woe is me is unnecessary. And I've been on both sides of the spectrum. I'm getting a little better when it's time for me to identify when I'm the problem. I am amazed at those that will figure like they write in everything that they do. They somehow the sovereign of all things right. They the poster. They the post the example of all things right. And um, I be in that zone. I'm glad that I'm getting better with checking myself, but I be in that zone. It's the Virgo moon for me. My Virgo moon 
to say is that because I research the stuff that I research, that um, everybody is subjected, now subjected to be learning all the stuff that I be learning. Everybody don't, everybody ain't even interested. Everybody not interested. And so I got to make room for that. I got to make room for the reality that everybody not interested. Not only am they are they not interested in what it is that I'm learning. If it doesn't ensure how they're going to make money or how they're going to be able to fuck. Everybody want to hump and make money. They want to hustle and hump. That's what they want to do. Everybody want to hustle and hump. And I mean, I think it's by design for real. When, when you come into a society and you are the product... You are the indentured servant. Yeah, that's what the uh, existential value is all twined up in. That whole be fruitful and multiply has twined up the agendas and the bucket list for certain people. But I mean, to each his own, I'm going to continue to say, I'm going to continue to remind myself it's to each his own. Why? Because now I'm inside the energy that says, Thea, what's the deal when you're the problem? I know for anybody who don't truly like me, if they was to see this, they'd be like, yeah, it, this this going to empower them. <laughs> this going to empower the fuck out of them. But I will say that even at the end of this day, um, it's going to empower me too. And the miraculous thing about it is I'm not even talking about me at this very moment. I'm not inside of any situation that's requiring me to do a reflection. But I have been in a series, a string of situations back to back to back to back that was having me take a good look. And not even in the mirror. No, I had to close my eyes and, and, and open up the first eye. I had to look within. Nothing a mirror can show me. I had to look at the versions of me that is not seen by the physical eye. And I am a totally different being without this flesh. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to ask that question. It's amazing that these are the only two cards that came out. But um, I wanted to pose that question because it is something that I... Um, contend with on a regular basis so um yeah we jamming with earl clue right now just because he makes me feel so sophisticated <laughs> whether i am or not <laughs> like adele say because i'm a fucking lady <laughs> Where's Adele? I need to find Adele. Man. Because I'm a fucking lady. <laughs> so, okay. So, since no other cards are coming out. And like I said, I am devoting the, today to the segments to be talking to the cards. Whatever the cards want to say, that's what we're going to talk about. And so, I think with this particular segment, it might be the shortest segment today. Um, this is this is all they want to talk about at this point. So, um, yeah. I'm going to ask the question again. Are you pliable? Are you open to recognizing when you are the fucking problem? We're not going to put it in terms of good and bad or righteous or evil. You're human. So things are going to happen that's going to be uberly satisfying or uberly dissatisfying. If we take away the context of wanting to register it right or wrong versus it just is, it's all part of the play. It's all part of the earthling existence. How about that? Oh, 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 oh. Everything that's worth anything on all levels take time. Um, some things will be swift, and that doesn't mean that that is not of official magnitude, but the stuff that actually do require um, 
for the cake to bake. This shows me that um, to just release the expectation that says I want it now. I tell folks I'm probably one of the living examples of the prime uh, delay in gratification. Because several years ago, I was a very, very, very impatient person. And it, 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 it dictated the way I made decisions and who I would deal with and who I wouldn't deal with and how long I would deal with them and all that other kind of stuff. And so I know for the last 24 months, I've been undergoing this crash course in my patience and expectations. And um, slowing down to sever cords. And not fucking around when they need to be severed. Nurturing cords. And not fucking around and sabotaging it when it needs to be nurtured. And it takes time. So they say that this particular night is the slowest night in the day. The pentacle. Because pentacles represents the physical world. And coins and whatever it is, uh, in conjunction with earth. It's of the earth elemental. And so just like the seasons change and um, the flora and the fauna is in conjunction to the cycling of the seasons, I, in my opinion, it feels like this night shows up to remind us in season and in cycle in all due time. Divine timing has a lot to do with when you eat the grapes, when you pluck the watermelon, when you can pull the bananas. It, it, so it ties into that which nurtures inside of the nature. Interesting. Forcing yourself before it's time for you to means you are prematurely acting. And that could be the reason why you're the problem. And I swear I don't say that with like, you're the problem and, and I'm not. How about this? When we're the problem, it might have something to do with timing. Yeah, that, that feels better. Let's, let's do that. Because I promise you I ain't pointing no fingers. I'm not. I'm the wretched one a lot. I am. I am the wretched one a lot. It almost makes me feel like I be in those positions so that I can get... So that I can gather that firsthand data and understand content and context, situation and circumstances, happenstances, maturity, all of that stuff in real time. So that I can talk about it because I am a talker. But I don't talk all the time. I talk when it's time for me to talk. I'm good at my silence. I know how to sit in a room full of people and not say one fucking thing. I'm cool with my silence. I'm learning how to be cool with when I speak as well inside of the confidence to say it don't have to be nobody else's truth. And I'm not even saying this for you to agree. Just put it on the table. It's healthy when you be able to put it on the table and nobody rushes to judge it. Just let it churn for a minute. See how you honestly feel about it. Take a look at it. Step away from it. Come back. Do you still feel the same? Now, if you step away from it, you return to it, still fuckery. Once you step away from it again, you don't need to return to it. But if you do give it a chance and you do step back into it and it's a totally different vibe. I'm just saying, what's on the bottom of this deck? Oh. Oh. You, me, we deserve true affection, true affirmation, true support in our individual journeys. And if you find yourself around people, places, and things that always contradict your center, that will make you a problem too. That will easily turn you into the problem. Because 
you like trying to fit your round self into a pig even though the the circle enters the square and the square enters the circle i've been finding out so they don't even i can't even say that no more okay what what um what tries to fit the can i gotta think of another because both of them go inside of each other all depending on the dimensions i'll think of another one but the, whatever don't fit whatever don't fit and when it doesn't fit you become the problem and we figure that because we be identifying where the problems are and if that's the majority on us that somehow it's a strike when I'm gonna leave you with this how do you know you are not supposed to be the problem inside of the scenario how you know you not serving as the catalyst how do you know that that shit unfolded in fuckery because it was de de designed and divine to do so? Because certain things are fucked up so that they can get fixed or at least, or at least properly observed. Some fuckery is fortune all, de all depending on how we transmute. But we constantly listening to folks that say there aren't there ought not to be no problems, no sorrow, no nothing. We supposed to be living these happily blissful lives when you can look at this realm and see the smorgasbord, the spectrum of fortune to fuckery and and, vi and back, vice versa, <laughs> simultaneously all intertwined up in it. This is a bittersweet round and you're not going to have all of one and none of the other. Why are we so slow to understand that? Why are we so slow to understand that it might hurt? It might fucking hurt. Until next time. <laughs>